Over the past at least two years, I've been the target of a group of gang stalkers I like to call the McCrazies. The name is a bit tongue-in-cheek as they are obsessed with my friend and business partner, who most of you are probably aware of, Steve McCray. Their reason for targeting me is pretty clear. Because I'm friends with and work with Steve. Steve's crimes in this case usually amounts to some mild criticism that he gave to someone. Examples, leaving a Facebook group, telling Unirock that he thought some information was mishandled, explaining that there is a philosophical definition to atheism, pedophilia in the Catholic Church is wrong, and the patrons of that church should take issue. In August 2018, Steve had posted this to his Twitter, and it remained pinned until people began to question his handling of the Errol David Warden situation. Suddenly, it became unpinned. These are quite mundane things. However, the people on the receiving end are so fragile that they have been making escalating accusations of him ever since. From, but not limited to, transphobia, calling him a rape apologist, producing child porn, murdering one of his best friends, no, I'm not linking that one, sexually taking advantage of his underage daughter, fraud, sexual harassment, then Cheshire came out with a whopper of a lie and claimed that Katie was saying Steve sexually harassed me when I was a man. The first lie I'm going to touch on is, quote, a whopper of a lie and claimed Katie, that's Katie Joy Polson, by the way, was saying Steve sexually harassed me when I was a man, end quote. Since this has been going on, four other women have come forward and told me that they have gone through similar experiences with him. They have been accused of doing all kinds of things, and he has targeted them. One woman named Fiona has told me that she has been targeted for over a year. Another woman named Laura told me that she has been a target of his for months. And I did not falsely accuse Steve of sexual harassment. Just shh, you guys, it didn't. I can find at least 10 other women that have the exact same story as me. I'm not falsely accusing them. He made statements to me. You're not going to make me apologize for your bad behavior. Look in the mirror. Stop making women objects, please. Stop it. Stop targeting women. Four other women have come forward and told me that you did the exact same thing to them. Laura has a lot of things to say about you, so does Fiona. Sending death threats, etc, etc, etc. All of which, of course, have no basis in reality, and are pretty far-fetched from where the issue, uh, the issue these people have with him started. Mild disagreement about the obvious, or light criticism. Naturally, because people aren't stupid, slanderous lies like this don't gain too much traction. Except within their own group, of course. People that have been previously rejected by Steve, henceforth known simply as rejects. These lies, though tricky, as they are built on other older lies, are quite debunkable. Only the most desperate, lazy, dishonest, and easily manipulated, or those with a, uh, with a previous gripe or vendetta ever buy into anything like this. As such, these rejects get frustrated like a lover unable to perform, leaving an empty feeling of disappointment behind. So naturally, they lash out. Seeking out people to abuse around Steve currently, or people that may be for or against him in the future. Are you freaking kidding me? More than happy to debate Kren about whatever is bothering him about me. On my channel, anytime. Two days later. Kren's online stalking and reporting to Step on Me has been included in my police report. Good job, Creepazoid. Much later. Uh, Kren has kept me blocked. He could have had any questions answered. I even private messaged him since we were contacts on Facebook. He ran away like a little turdling and blocked me. What? Making me a natural target, though still a poor choice. Their attempts against me have at best fallen flat or at worst backfired completely. 
For example, the recent attempt to say that my new haircut is somehow indicative of me entering a cult. Yeah, it gets bizarre, but that's how they make their money, being outrageous to entice a viewer to see what they will say next and to incite a response. That's what I want to talk about here. For the longest time, at least six months or so, I have not blocked any of these people on Twitter, as that is where the cyber-stalking and harassment that I'm talking about in this case has taken place. Not to ignore or discredit their own YouTube channels, plural, which contain weeks worth of content on Steve alone, not even including me or Red's rhetoric or other targets of theirs. My reason for blocking them were pretty straightforward. One, I don't really care what they say. Two, blocking them feeds into their persecution complex. Three, allowing them to demonstrate their garbage behavior all on their own. Four, exposing their obsessive, nat uh, obsessive nature and uh, desperation for attention. Five, sometimes allowing an outlet for them to baby rage allows them to feel satisfied in a way that prevents escalating toxic behavior. And six, the 1% chance they may actually provide something of even the slightest bit of value. I simply muted them and moved on with these intentions in mind. Of course, they would respond on the majority of my tweets as well as oddly behave as if they were having an ongoing conversation with me, although I went out of my way to be sure to never respond to them directly in this manner, except the for perhaps special situations. I allowed this setup for months, and after observing enough of it, and after witnessing transphobia, racism, homophobia, sexism, ableism, attacking underage children, sexual harassment, weaponizing the dead, pretty well anything you could think of, and apologetics for these things, I finally decided that I was tired of these people trying to pony off of my tweets to try and boost their toxic hatred for not only Steve, but pretty well anyone they view as other with a sick focus and target on minorities, the mentally disabled, women, and victims of rape and harassment in particular. All of this over mild disagreement and or mild criticism from two to six years ago? How is I don't like this Steve guy somehow a justification for homophobia? Self-righteous hatred is a hell of a drug, I guess. So, I finally blocked them. I got sick of good people that could be having much better and interesting conversations getting dragged into and dragged down these rabbit holes of dishonest discussion and garbage. It makes for good practice if you want to learn about fallacies, rhetoric, and manipulation, how to recognize and counteract things like sea lining, but is it really worth it? Not for me. I don't want my posts, my account, my platform being used and hijacked for this disgusting behavior. I don't want to accidentally expose vulnerable people, victims, whoever, to this absolute trash. Let alone some poor person just deciding to scroll my timeline, getting blindsided by whatever horrendous thing they're going to try to say or do next. I wrote a blog about these rejects in the winter of 2019-2020 that spoke about how, from my experience of these people at the time, it seemed to me that they pretty well are a bunch of walking projectors and that anything you see them accusing people of, they either have done it, would do it, or are planning to do it. It being whatever thing they're accusing people of at the time. Now, I've recently witnessed these people accusing others of murdering their friends and child porn. If my observation from then remains true, as it has up until this point, I don't know, but I don't want it around me, nor do I want anything that they have been or will be a part of getting boosted on my platform to the best of my ability. So I blocked them, and I noticed a few things. One, most of them have me blocked already. Two, a lot of them have private accounts. Which was interesting, as it seemed to me to indicate that only three or four of them would actually engage, thus any interaction was really just them desperately fishing for a reaction that they could screenshot and then take back to the others. 
ignoring what kind of odd relationship, existence, and psychological state that must be to, to be so needy for acceptance that this is what you stoop to, and focusing a little bit on how long th they had been attempting to do this for and for what. That's, that's not advocacy. That's not exposing someone for whatever they've done. That's not demonstrating lies or some kind of poor behavior. That's virtue signaling at best. That's fishing for content, acceptance, or admiration from the people you're going back to. This the ends justify the means mentality with a complete loss of what the ends actually is. When the ends is some short-lived self-satisfaction to the point that you keep chasing it like some kind of high or over some mundane as fuck issue with Steve from up to six years ago, what are you doing besides harm to whoever unrelated to your direct targets like me or Steve as collateral just for your selfish nonsense is a new level of entitlement. Anyway, some of the people on this list may be a surprise to you, and, and some may not. The Gordian knot of how these people are actually connected is, well, just that, a Gordian knot. Good luck untangling it. Being able to recognize it, though, that's important. The advocates on the YouTube channel of the line have involvement with this group of gang stalkers, Plus, their complete lack of addressing, let alone taking action, in regards to the behavior of Jimmy Snow, who is, of course, also tied to this group. All the way to some of these people boosting and supporting an obsessed and unhinged old man running around accusing a few of us of murdering someone they claim to have been friends with. The response of, well, maybe they don't know, is at this point not good enough. This has been pointed out and have been going on for far too long. Any of these people unaware of the goings-on about these things, especially with how pervasive and how public it is at this point, are at the level of purposeful ignorance or negligence. If you are one of the people surprised, I agree with you. There are some people I have blocked that I ought not to have to, if you're reading this, or listening to this, and you are one of those people, maybe this can act as a bit of a head shake. Look around you, see the web of deceit, victims, and toxic monsters surrounding you. Be careful, though, because if you tr do try to get yourself free, they will go after you. I've seen it before, and I'll likely see it again. In conclusion, I guess I refuse to let my platform be weaponized against other people, and that's why I finally blocked the Gordian Knot of McCrazies. Wish you all the best, and stay safe out there.